guys, Julesy here, live from Accra, Ghana. So happy to be a traveling smart girl that I even packed my Stay Blessed and Unbothered mug so I can sip my water along in it and you too can still celebrate your smart brown girls on this holiday season. The shop is still open. Where's my water? Let me get my water. Oh, also, I am doing a quick sale of African print clothing since I get so many requests of it. It is at AkraWears.BigCartel.com. The shop will be only open till about Christmas time because I still have to package everything to get it back to the States to ship it. I might even add this shirt that I currently have on. Comment down below and let me know, do you like my shirt? So I have not watched a lot of TV since getting to Ghana in November, but I was missing being Mary Jane. So I decided to use the last few gigs on my little Surfline Wi-Fi and catch up on the final episodes of season three. And I am so very happy that I did, girl. Whew, I might have to do more than one video about just how awesome being Mary Jane is and why smart brown girls should all watch it. Yeah. Now, the last review that I did was on episode three, a very deep conversation about forgiveness and grief and dealing with losing a friend. You can watch that video and read the blog posts right here at the eye if it drops down or I'll link it down below in the description box. Now since like catching up on the season finale, there are just so many things to discuss. I'm going to try and recap quickly my thoughts here on episodes four through what was it 10 or 11 and then maybe um in the coming weeks, I will do videos on like the major themes and motifs that were reoccurring through season three of Being Mary Jane. So if you are a fan, definitely as I'm talking about some things that stick out to me, comment below and let me know what really piques your interest and then we can do further discussions on them for all our awesome smart brown girls. So in episode four being Kara, we had the much deserved character development of Kara, where we had a deeper look into her struggles with her identity as a Latina and battling being a career-minded mother. While in the background, we had Mary Jane working through her grief through overdosing on coitus to the points of chafing. Girl, that's a lot of sex. I enjoy Kara because like Mary Jane, she is a very complex woman who even through her struggles, vulnerabilities, and insecurities exudes an immense amount of strength. The struggle that Kara has with her identity as a Latina is something that a lot of women of color deal with as we work our way up from nothing. Starting from the bottom is never really starting at zero. It's starting at negative 100. And so if as you dig yourself out of this hole that you didn't build and you get a little dirt on your shoulders, it might take more grit than just dusting it off. You know, and that's where we're finding Kara at as she realizes that she can't really be 100% for everyone every time. There's a really good interview, I have to find it and link it down below with Shonda Rhimes, where she commented on as she becoming a mother, realizing that she couldn't be 100%, 100% of the time, that in order for some things to win, other things would have to give and that fluctuates. And so she does her best to organize her time realistically and that's what Kara is working through in season three. So five, Mary J Mama still don't like nobody and that includes Jilly from Philly who pops up as Niecy's mama, Jackie. Now I still do not care for Niecy and I think PJ put his like finger on it, what was that, episode seven or eight? where he addresses Nisi and the neat and her wanting to be rescued and how unrealistic like as an adult woman that you know she deserves to be loved she deserves to be cared for she deserves to be treated well but she can't sit around lamenting and wasting her time waiting for someone to kind of rescue you and hold her hand you know and i i as much as i don't care for Nisi i do appreciate her and i kind of get her whole, especially with this episode where Jill, her Jackie, her mama pops back up, in that she never had a real childhood. Like she was never properly loved or nurtured as a child. And so her extreme want for love and care, she's placing it in a very shallow want of materialism. And I just, I just wish, I don't know. I mean, I, it's not my lived experience. So maybe that's why I kind of, ugh with Nisi, um, but I do just kind of want her to, at moments, just, yeah, like, girl, own your struggle, but work towards something better rather than allowing your struggle to be the totality of who you are. I was definitely hoping to delve more into Jackie or Jill Scott as Nisi's mama, um, 
character but i guess we just had to settle for seeing the almost hot and steamy scene she had with patrick and then her music her new music being used in what was it episode eight sure now the rest of the season definitely picked up momentum almost to the point of where episode three did with lisa there was a lot happening and i love how being mary jane ticks off on all the major issues that we're dealing with in like real time like when did they record this show that they could slide in talking about terrorism and the coverage or the lack of coverage of what's happening in africa and even calling out the terrorist attacks in baga 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 yeah girl Thing to discussing police brutality in the season finale sorry if it's a spoiler girl but if I'm catching it a week late and I'm in Africa where I don't even show a girl, you should have been caught up. But Nisi is the perfect character for police brutality to happen to and for being Mary Jane to succinctly address it. I so can't wait for season four because Nisi is a poor single black mother, one of the most overlooked demographics in the United States. And fortunately for Nisi, she does have some influential relatives. So. It's gonna be great to see how that kind of plays out in this the following season, but you know, oh, good job, Mara Braca Kill. Another theme was Mary Jane drinking the Kool-Aid, getting that primetime spot, but losing a sense of her integrity and what she really stood for. Even though it was through the very conniving CC, you know, whenever Loretta Devine popped back up on your screen with that little high-pitched, sweetest pie, oh, little old me voice, you know she ain't up to shit. She conniving her way into something. But it was Cece who kind of, I thought was gonna be like the fairy godmother for MJ, but this is real life, girl. You can't go with story and folks. You know, even though it was through conniving Cece and a very archetypal, 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 ooh, am I saying that word right, girl? Angry, well, pseudo angry, college age, black girl. Like we ain't already did this in Women of Brewster Place, covered in dear white people. <laughs> you see this character kind of portrayed a lot, but it was that helped Mary Jane find her way into understanding how to use the master's tools to bring down the master's house. When that quote came across the screen, make me a slave but pay me enough, girl, I wanted to copy and paste that on so many Instagram accounts. We definitely live in a society that is upselling a lifestyle without any actual content and therefore doesn't really stand for anything. But again, as CC said, we prefer things and not value. Girl such a conniving woman she really was smart and i love that i love how they play that you know it's not like she was some poor broke down woman that was just after money like she knew her shit such a damn son that was so cold-blooded women's sexual identity has been a strong undercurrent throughout the three seasons of being mary jane and when they did the episode with nichelle talking about what's a hoe count yes i was just like nichelle is that friend that every woman needs to validate her ratchet in the moments where she wants to beat herself down for actually doing something that she wanted to do my girl just have a little fun sometimes and i you ain't a hoe unless somebody know my personal belief is you ain't a hoe unless somebody know you know you want to talk about my sexual life then and 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 name names nigga if you can't name names nigga then you ain't got nothing on me. You ain't got nothing. Ladies, just remember, don't waste time putting a clean condom on a dirty dick. Let me find out where to get a hold of them at-home STD kits. I was watching that scene like, ooh, yeah, yes, for, yes, for, yes for safety. Your vagina is a beautiful pH balanced vessel and you need to know, but girl, where do I get these kits at? Like where? Nisi pops back up like every other topic, but she also very strongly highlights the struggles that family, that middle class, upper middle class black families have with passing their wealth onto their offspring and the kind of struggles with wanting to provide for them and care for them, but also having to let them fight their own battles and how much is thrown at the black family to keep up and persevere. I don't know that I have a full understanding of MJ's father's willingness to kind of enable Nisi financially and her lostness, but putting the foot down very strongly and on Patrick. Like I get it, but then I don't get it. And you know, cause he says things about Patrick and that you like how you get so caught up in protecting your child that you forget how to fight for them. Or maybe I'm messing up the quote or whatever, but kind of alluding to the fact that you wanna, 
you want to overprotect your kid that you don't allow them to confront their own demons and really get over it. But then it's like, aren't you in theory, in theory repeating the same thing with Nisi again? But yeah, you know, I understand something that I really understand about Bang Mary Jane is that I don't necessarily have to understand every character's plot line, right? Like a lot of what Mary Jane does really well is bring up some things for us to have a conversation and a discussion on because we don't get it, but others may. Just like Mark in 2015 wanting to hide his sexuality versus using it as something to really amplify the plight of gay black men. But on the flip side, you know, why just because I'm gay do I have to be the spokesperson for all, all gay black men? Maybe I just won't be me and be regular. But the only one person that I am not here for, I'm not trying to understand, I don't like, she can go, is Patrick, baby mama. I think her name is like Marie or something. We just gonna call her Becky. Becky need to go. I don't like nothing about Becky. I don't like her. I mean, I'm happy that she pulled Patrick's card because he all be need, we take a Percocet, pill popping, whatever. Mm -mm. that's always some shit white boys get away with that's still drugs boo boo don't do them but other than that she's just ugh. like every time she walks on the screen i'm just like oh no this bitch what's she gonna destroy now kara's disdain for marisol girl we have to do a whole nother video that and the interracial dating topic i ain't got time to discuss that in this video we're gonna do a whole nother topic on that one hit us hit us hit us Hit us, Mara be hitting. Kara's disdain for Marisol is so interesting because this happens too many times in real life where women of color will break down barriers, burst that glass ceiling, go through the mud and put in the work and achieve some greatness and talk so much about leaning in and jumping over these barriers and bursting this glass ceiling and then women's empowerment and what they represent for women who look like them and then a woman who looks like them shows up a little too close to home and they decide to recommission that glass ceiling and barriers and expect her to jump over them as well. Kara definitely stuck her heels in the mud with Marisol and was too slow to pull them out and so now, ooh girl, it's gonna be real tough for Kara because HR with a black woman to wait for in the next season. I was just getting around to liking Cece, even in her conniving way. She was doing so much for the community. Like I want that bookstore to thrive, but she had just to, she just had to join team doing too much. Too much. She should have taken the egg roll, gave her advice, and then just use Cece, use Mary Jane as her friend. Cause MJ was like low key coming around too, but I even got caught up in the game. Like I legit thought MJ had found a way to flip it and allow them to both prosper so that that bookstore and the community could thrive and Cece wouldn't be up on MJ like you owe me money every two seconds. But that setup was cold. It was cold bloody. I was like, oh, jumped about the bed. Like I, I, I got, got, I didn't see it. Like I kind of saw it, but I didn't want to believe it. I didn't, I, I wanted to be happy, but like extortion is not no lightweight like jail sentence neither. But low key, if I was Mary Jane, I probably would've did that a lot quicker. Like I probably would've set her up like that before I even wrote her a check. <laughs> because no. I mean, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad. Like I'm just kind of, that's a conundrum. It's just, that's what Cece was, one big conundrum. What I love most about the show is how each character shows us a piece of ourselves about our humanness, our insecurities, our vulnerabilities, our flaws, and our strengths, and makes us think about so many things that we are really dealing with in real life through entertainment through one-liners like girls trying to catch up no muster well, i definitely think there's gonna be a conversation about how often the latinos get left out of the discussion of minorities girl mj should have slid marisol in there but we'll wait for season four i see it coming i'm just so excited i love this show so again as i said earlier in the video because this is like a really quick wrap up of half a season definitely comment down below what were your favorite things about this season and I will think to put together some videos in the coming week because I got time. I got my surf lines together. I done paid too much money for this Wi-Fi so we finna use it up before I peace out of a cry. And you know, talking about being Mary Jane is just so fun and enlightening. I think it's a great conversation to have. So comment down below. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like this and read the blog post to go along. Deuces!